Welcome back. Let's take a look at branching and looping in Python. This is our lab 20. We have the module else.py and I'll give you a big hint. The reason for this module really is just on line 9. So you get that keyword lf. That's the least English-like keyword in the language, lf. And it means exactly what you think. And nothing else is too surprising. So on line four, we set up our number to be 25. We're going to learn to gather a number interactively. So this piece of code will make more sense. Here I am printing it out. Number is, I didn't say what it is. And then I ended with just a space so that I can see what it is. If it's less than 10, I'll be saying small. But it isn't. It's 25, which is also less than 1,000. So I say medium. Here it is. 25 is medium. And these prints don't have an end equals. Therefore, the new line happens. This is available in the language. If the number is greater than 10 and less than 50, so the, fit, the and isn't in there, but it's assumed. Number is in. We see that it is. Once again, I'm saying number is and equals a space. And this form of a conditional is available since 2.5. Now, what uh, you read it, it reads nicely, but it is different from what you're used to from other C-based languages. The, we're going to say that it's small if it's less than 10, else if it's medium. So we have the else, so it's already a greater, a 10 or greater. So we're going to say medium if it's less than 1,000, and we're going to say else large. I tried to make this exactly the same, or as readable anyway, because Guido took a long time to put it in the language because he thought it was not as readable as this. Well, it certainly is not. But sometimes it's very handy. This is what we saw before. And I am just repeating it because we're talking about else. Here's another else. But we already know that. Let's finally study the range built-in function. We saw it in that first bird's eye view lab as well. Range. Often, or maybe almost always, when you use range, you're using it in a for loop. For number in range. That's what we did before. Oh, notice that that in is golden. It's a keyword too. It's a really big workhorse. In fact, it is the in that goes through these one at a time and delivers them to the four to assign to the number. So, okay, we're starting at three and we're going to print our three and we're not going to let go of the new line. So there it is. Then we add two and we add two and we add two. That gives us nine and we don't add two, we're done. Now we go to the new line. Now, here's a little bit of a wrinkle for you. If you print range, rather than use it in a for loop, what you get is range. It doesn't tell you anything you didn't already know. So the trick for making that be informative is you either call the built-in function, or actually it's a class or a type, tuple. You wrap that around your call to range and it'll give you the answers as a tuple. Or you could do the same thing with the word list and it gives you the answers as a list. Notice that the difference between a tuple is the round braces or the square braces. Well, I'm going to be throwing those two words around without you understanding them. I'm going to apologize for that, but it's too boring to learn everything about those until you develop some curiosity. And um, we will learn the difference. So hold on. Right now, they are comma-separated objects either with round braces or square braces, really either without any braces, which often are round braces instead, 
or square braces. Square braces mean a list. Here we see the synopsis. You can give the range and give it just one number. And it will start at zero and add one and add one and add one, and it'll never produce that number you give it. Or you could give it a start like we did when we did three. And it'll add a start, I and mean, we'll start at a start. When we ask the interpreter for help on range and many, many things, we'll see square brackets in there. That is nothing like the square brackets that are a list. Just different syntax. There really are in different contact, contexts. When you see that in a help or in a synopsis, that means optional. That means I can, if I give my range a second argument, which will be the first one to start, if I wish, I can add a cap, comma and another argument, the increment. If you see that these three calls into range are the same, they give the same results, you got it. In countingloop.py, I am saying again that for num in range is used a lot and you want to use it when you know exactly how many times you want to go around, whether you use that num or not. This loop is going to go around five times, starting with the zero, and there it is. Zero times two is zero. Here we're printing out times two equals, and here we're given the answer. We're going to end at four because we'll never get to the five. Got it? Big thing. Here we see the operators in Python, the relational and the logical. When you have ifs and whiles, then you're going to want relational operators. Less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, equal, both sides the same, and not equal. Well, that's the same as all languages. Now, the logical operators, they're a little different because if you want to say and, you say and. That's not like other languages. So these English words appear in your code, meaning exactly what they should. I should mention that relational operators are called relational operators because they talk about the relationship between the two sides or the two operands. That's why they're relational. And these are logical operators because they result in the Booleans, true or false. Okay, you're on for your second lab. Have a good time. I'll see you on the other side.